Hi, welcome to Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and today we're talking about waterproof power distribution modules. All right, so we're talking about these waterproof power distribution modules, and you're probably wondering what these things are, or what they do, and what you might do with them. So we've got two different varieties that we offer, and uh, they basically have the same construction, but they have a few differences. So there's a three position, which has six terminals in it, and that means that you can fit three fuses in this. And basically what this one can do is provide three positions of waterproof fuse protection. So you can have three different circuits, all of it's waterproof. You've got a silicone seal here, cable seals back here. Uh, you can put fuses in this. Additionally, because this cap is, is longer, you can also fit circuit breakers in here. Of course, circuit breakers work just like the ones in your house. Uh, if there's a short circuit or something gets crossed up in the wires, the circuit breaker pops instead of blowing a fuse, and then you fix the problem, and the circuit breaker starts to work again. You don't have to replace it. And that means that when you're in the middle of nowhere and you forgot to replace your spare fuse that you replaced the last time you had an electrical problem, you're not actually stuck. You just fix the problem, reset the circuit breaker, and you're back on your way. Now, that's the three position. It's pretty much the basic version of this. Now, the four position, same basic thing, except we've got eight terminals, which means we've now got four positions for fuses or circuit breakers. And then there's a slightly added bonus with the four position distribution module, and that is that you can actually fit relays in this as well. So there's a micro relay out there that um, works just like any other relay, and you can actually fit two of those in here, or you could fit two fuses or two few circuit breakers and one relay. And that works really great for an M unit install on a fuel injected bike. And the way that works is you've got a main fuse, a low amp fuse that you could use for an M lock or a gauge or anything else that needs a little bit less amperage. And then you've still got a slot left for a fuel pump relay. Most fuel injected bikes, um, the fuel pump and the O2 sensors and a lot of that stuff is controlled by the ECU, so you want to have that running on a relay, and this gives you the option to do that in a completely waterproof sealed package, so your relay never gets exposed to the elements, the contacts don't really corrode because it's in this dry, hermetically sealed environment. Great thing, and of course, it still fits the circuit breakers and the fuses. Pretty cool stuff. So. The mechanics of assembling these and doing the terminals and the wire crimping and all that stuff is the same between two versions. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually demonstrate how to assemble one of these and also demonstrate how the circuit breakers work. Uh, there are a couple different flavors of circuit breakers and we'll get into the differences there when we get to it. Uh, so I'm going to put the four position away. Uh, you won't see that one again. Trust me, the relays fit, the fuses fit, it all fits in here and it's pretty cool because it's clear and you can actually see what's going on. Whereas with the three position, um, we've just got the black covers. So this is the cap, this is the housing, the housing holds the terminals, and the terminals come in this little baggie. If you're familiar with automotive style connectors, this is all going to be the same as what you've seen before. You have a cable seal, and you've got a terminal. Now to assemble this, you're going to need some wire. Got some right here, and a little bit more. And you're gonna need some tools. We've got a wire stripper, a side cutter, and a crimper. So first up, strip back a bit of the insulation. And now you only wanna strip back about an eighth of an inch. You just wanna make sure you get a good crimp on that terminal, but if you got too much wire strip back, the terminals are a little bit tricky. Now we can slide our cable seal in position, bring our terminal in. Now you'll notice on the terminals that there's two different crimp locations. The forward one, like normal, is for the conductor. And for whatever reason, I'm always, I always like to crimp that one first. So get that guy in there, crimp it down. And then the back one is for the cable seal, and that just kind of holds the wire, pinches the cable seal, tightens that all up. So now all we need to do is install this into the housing. Now there is a right and a wrong way to do this, and there's only one right way and four possible wrong ones. So what we're looking at is there's this little spring clip here, and that goes 
in the bottom of this little T shape. So you just kind of put that in there and push it until it clicks. All right, terminal one down. And now I'm gonna strip some more wires and add some more terminals. This time I'm gonna use two wires in one terminal. Not exactly a great way to do it, and the reason I'm doing it this way is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, that way we've got an extra wire that I can use to short out the circuit breaker later. In general, with anything that's got a cable seal like this, you only wanna put one wire in there so that the cable seal can actually seal and do its job. Now, jam two wires through. And we can add the terminal. Like a lot of the stuff that we do in these videos, it's a little bit half-ass and quick and dirty, but again, this is demonstration purposes, so when you're doing this for real, take a little bit more time and care and do it right. That way you only have to do it once. Yeah, that'll hold. And now just get a crimp on that cable seal. Good. All right. And now into the housing. Of course, we're just gonna do one uh, set of contacts in this. And so I'm just gonna put this right next to the other one that we just did. And because those two wires are jammed in there, that cable seal didn't quite make it where it's supposed to go. But that gives me the opportunity to talk about one thing we haven't talked about yet. This little blue thing, technically it's an optional part of this assembly but it is a good idea. This is what is known as a TPA, which stands for Terminal Position Assurance. Uh, this assures that your terminals are in the correct position. And all you do after you've got everything loaded into your housing, um, that means the other four that are missing in this case, you just clip this in the back. And now, in my case, it won't go on because my cable seal is not in the right position, so the Terminal Position Assurance device won't go into position either. Um, this is a good thing to use. It is not explicitly necessary, and if you wanted to omit it, no one's going to come arrest you. All right, anyway, the good news. Our housing is put together. We've got some wires hanging out of the back. Go ahead and strip the back of these so we can connect them to things. All right, so now we've got our cables in the housing with the terminals, and we've stripped the ends of these a little bit. So now we're going to add a circuit breaker. I'm gonna start with a conventional circuit breaker that's a manual reset. And then we're gonna also need a way to indicate when this uh, circuit is tripped. So let's use a supernova LED. Um, and now to wire this up, I'm gonna wire it up kinda of like I was doing it on a bike. So I'm gonna take of the, the two wire terminals, I'm just gonna grab one of those um, and connect it to the red. and do it really quick and dirty because this is just a simple demonstration. Just twist that guy on there. That's a terrible idea if you're actually doing this on a motorcycle. Um, next, we're gonna need a battery to power this up. So anti-gravity to the rescue. Just get that guy stuck in there. Um, complete the circuit, ground. Use a little bit of that. And an alligator clip. All right, cool. Uh, we've got our LED working. Now to simulate a short circuit, that's why I added that second wire to that second terminal that we put together. All I'm gonna do is give a dead short to the ground side of this terminal. This would simulate what would happen if um, on your bike you had a really bad short circuit. This is probably worse than you'd ever have on a bike, but it's great to check the worst case scenario. All right, anyway, here we go. Short circuit. All right, shut everything down. This wire didn't get hot, nothing lit on fire. That's the whole point of circuit protection. It keeps things from lighting on fire. And you also notice that with the manual reset circuit breaker, uh, this little white tip just popped out uh, maybe an eighth inch. And now to reset it, of course, right now the light's not on, no current's flowing. I can short this out as much as I want, nothing happens. To reset it, just push that guy back in, circuit's back alive, easier than changing a fuse, and if you didn't have a fuse, it's way easier than walking home. All right, we'll do that short circuit one more time, just for fun, and 
and there you go. It's that easy. So that's the manual reset type of circuit breaker. And this is a pretty conventional system where the contacts are actually mechanical and they move inside of there and you can actually hear things moving inside of there. The other type of circuit breaker that we have is what's called a solid state circuit breaker. And this is an automatic reset. So there's no button that you have to push. Uh, once the circuit has been corrected, it should just start working again. Again, red, 10 amp. And with the solid state ones, there's no moving parts. There's nothing to wear out. This is basically the same kind of thing as you've got in an M unit. And that means that when it needs to interrupt the current, no contacts open up, there's nothing to wear out. There's nothing to get corroded or pitted or anything. This just works. They're also not sensitive to vibration. They're not sensitive to temperature. Um, given a choice, this is the one that I prefer. Um, the one nice thing about the manual reset is that there is a a lot more variation in the amperages available. Um, the solid state stuff is basically in multiples of five or 10. Um, the manual reset, you can get a little bit more um, finer resolution. So you can have like a seven and a half, a 10 and 15, and there's just a lot more options. For my bike and my choice, I would choose the solid state just because I really like not having moving parts. All right, so we'll put this guy in there. Awesome, our light came back. And now, short circuit. So I'm just holding this on there. No light's flowing, or sorry, no light is on. Uh, current is not flowing. Wire's not getting hot, nothing's happening. And now, as soon as I take that short circuit away, magically this thing just starts to work again. This is also really handy for troubleshooting a problem. If you've got a short or an intermittent short and you're riding along and everything goes dark, you replace your fuse, it works for a while, but you're not sure how and then this way you can kind of go through the loom and kind of jiggle wires and see when the light comes on. It'll help you identify where you have a problem in your loom. So we'll do that short circuit one more time. Short circuit, all right. There's a problem, I know exactly where it is, but if you didn't, you could be searching around for it and then as soon as you find it, fix the short, the light comes on, indicates you found the problem. Really handy for troubleshooting. All right, um, that is kind of the overview of the waterproof power distribution modules and also the circuit breakers um, that are compatible with this system. They do work with standard fuses, so if you were ever kind of somewhere and something happened with a circuit breaker, you could always just replace it with an ordinary mini fuse. Um, but honestly, circuit breakers are great. They don't wear out, they don't go bad, especially the solid state ones. Those are just about bulletproof. So, cool. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've got any questions, Give us a call, send us an email. We're always here to help and we wanna see you get your project on the road.